yeah so earlier in the episode we briefly spoke on identity and access management what made you want to get into that because it's one of those fields i tell people man listen i am is where it's at when you think about it it's always needed every company needs i am and it's always most of the time it's not even they don't even do like i am right even from the simplest ways big to small companies and you can come in and have an immediate impact so what was it about i am that really just sparked your interest and said i want to do that yeah uh, so for me i think what happened was there was a twitter hack back in 2020 where essentially i'm not going to speak too much on the twitter hack but what happened was an employee's laptop got compromised and they didn't realize or didn't figure out in a quickly and timely manner what that employee had access to and the attacker was able to penetrate through the internal services and get more access to different services different resources different projects and stuff so the problem that they had was one why does this employee have all of this unneeded access two how is this access even granted three like there was just so many different things going around within access and identity management within that twitter hack so i took it upon myself to really sit back and think okay what if that happened to us at snap where would we have fallen and became victim to this attack what are we doing good? What are we doing bad? So taking a step back and really thinking about our identity and access management frameworks and the set of processes that we have here and the set of controls around the internal identities, external identities, et cetera, all identities that we have at the company and the organization. So for me, that attack really did spark my interest around just the whole I am. And there's so much that goes on within it. But I think for me, that's like the pivotal moment that I realized, okay, like software engineering is really cool and all, but I really would rather spend my time figuring out and answering all of these questions around I am. Yeah, I, I definitely get it. And for the people who are listening or watching, she pretty much explained that a person pretty much did some lateral movement in the environment. And they also, what's the word, the right term I'm thinking is, I should go to MITRE and look it up. I want to say it's persistence. I think it's persistence. Um, they had persistence and they were able to probably exfiltrate some data. But I just want to touch on that a little bit only because one of the ways when I'm coaching people, I'm telling them, hey, even in my Slack channel, I have a security news channel in my Slack space. And I tell them, hey, look at the stuff that's coming in every day and research some of these attacks and these different nation states that are behind these things that they're pushing out because you may get asked the question in an interview like, oh, how do you stay current with cybersecurity news and attacks? And if you go back and research breaches, you'll actually see the inner workings. They, a lot of researchers are breaking down what happened piece by piece. And then you can go recreate that, make you a lab, and you can just start learning stuff, especially if you want to get an IM. It always is at the center. Like Their goal is to, okay, boom, let's get them credentials. Like We're working on freaking, it's crazy, as simple as it is, people still fall for credential harvesters and putting their information into the wrong pages. It's just crazy. Especially some people, they're good at actual, the very real spear fishing aspect of it, where they make it seem like they've been talking to you for a while. They've been scoping you out and they, so they really make it look legitimate. Yeah, I agree. Some misconceptions people have about I am. Yeah, that's a good one. I think the first one that comes to mind is that people often think that I am is essentially like a security bullet for all security challenges and like all security concerns that you have at your company and it's not i am is an essential component for a robust security strategy but it's not a standalone solution to address all the security concerns on an organization there are other areas like encryption threat intelligence, network security, that all should be implemented in place to, to really build up a robust security program and a comprehensive security posture at an organization. So oftentimes people think that IAM is end all be all when it's not. So that is the first one that comes to mind. And I think another one is IAM is not only about passwords. There's so many other ways that users can identify themselves, whether that's 2FA, MFA, biometrics, etc. So people just think, oh, password, 
that's my user, that's how I'm gonna be authenticated, but that's just not. So I think those are probably the two that come to my mind. And then I think lastly, I am is not only for large organizations. I think people always think, oh, like I have a small business, I don't need I am. I'm a startup, I don't need I am. And I'm like, yeah, exactly. I think, yeah, some people think, oh, like we don't have hundreds of employees, but I think it's really important for even small businesses to make sure that they're only giving out the appropriate access and data that is needed for the specific work workload or workforce for that group or that role. I think a lot of I think a lot of companies should just implement back, which is the role based access control, very granular access control. And I think that will help solve a lot of those issues. But I am is not only for large organizations, small organizations, startups, even if you are like getting your foot started and building your organization, you should look at I am a lot of it, there's a lot of services that provide it like now for you under the hood. So you should just get on board.